Whoopi Goldberg's comments about the Holocaust this week on The View comes at a time when anti-Semitism is very much on the rise here in the U.S. John Avlon has more in today's Reality Check. In 1940, as World War II raged in Europe, Charlie Chaplin released a movie satirizing Hitler and the Nazis. It was called The Great Dictator, and he played two roles, but both the titular autocrat and a Jewish barber. The film was met with popular acclaim and political attacks, including from Nazi sympathizers who claimed that Chaplin was Jewish. Now, Chaplin did little to correct these rumors, but when confronted with the accusation, Chaplin reportedly said, I'm afraid I don't have that honor. It's a gentle reminder that standing up to anti-Semitism is a responsibility we all have in a civil society, regardless of our race or religion. This is not some distant concern because 75 years after the Holocaust, we've seen anti-Semitism on the rise in recent years. As you can see in this Anti-Defamation League chart, the number of anti-Semitic incidents in the U.S. has spiked since 2017, which happens to be the first year of the Trump presidency. Now, some of these incidents are infamous, like the mass shootings at synagogues in Pittsburgh and Poway, and others are more anonymous, but they all reflect the brazen anti-Jewish hate we saw the, at the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. But anti-Semitism also infects our politics in more subtle ways. Online conspiracy theories like QAnon tapped into anti-Semitic themes from blood libel accusations to the belief that sinister groups of elites are secretly running the world. That's in addition to the negative obsessions with George Soros parroted by folks at Fox News or Marjorie Taylor Greene's belief that Jewish space lasers cause wildfires. Amid this rising tide of hate and absurdity, the repeated Nazi comparisons directed by Republicans at COVID vaccine efforts, it sometimes can be hard to know whether to laugh or cry. And all of this time, though, comes at a time of increased fatalities from domestic violent extremist incidents and things like the recent bomb threats directed at historically black colleges and universities. And it's precisely because the haters seem so emboldened these days that it's essential to distinguish between people who use hate as a core part of their identity politics and people who make honest mistakes. Which brings me to Whoopi Goldberg, who was suspended for two weeks from The View for saying that the Holocaust was not a matter of race. Now, it seems clear that she was trying to distinguish between America's legacy of anti-black racism and the religious and ethnic prejudice that led to the Nazis to murder some six million Jewish people. She apparently didn't appreciate that Nazis often called Jewish people a separate race, and she ignored one of the basic rules of civil debate. There are no comparisons to the Holocaust. But here's the critical point. Whoopi Goldberg was not indulging in anti-Jewish hate. She had no repeated history of making anti-Semitic comments. In fact, quite the opposite. And when it became clear that her comments had crossed the line, she apologized repeatedly and sincerely. As ADL Jonathan Greenblatt explained on CNN, he didn't think that clumsy phrasing should be considered an irredeemable civic sin. I don't think her intent was malevolent. I think it was mistaken. And I think, you know, I don't believe in cancel culture, Bianca. I believe in council culture. So while she made a mistake, we need to recognize that all of us can do that. And if you apologize, you know, I think there's an opportunity for repentance. Now let's connect the dots to a lesser noticed and distantly related case. This week's suspension of Ileana Shapiro, the incoming executive director of the Georgetown Center for the Constitution, after tweets that complained President Biden's commitment to appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court would exclude what he believed were more qualified candidates, like the Indian American Chief Justice of the D.C. Circuit Court, Patricia Vanison. Now, Shapiro concluded that the nominee would therefore be a lesser black woman, which is a toxic phrase that smacks of centuries of structural racism. The outcry was swift and totally understandable. Shapiro deleted his tweets and rightly apologized, telling... And patterns of behavior matter. A real commitment to liberal values means an open dialogue that doesn't immediately assume the worst about people who say disagreeable things. And as Susan Nussel, the head of PEN America, cautioned, if these suspensions were prompted solely by offensive speech rather than biased conduct, they could add to the existing sense of chill in our public discourse regarding sensitive topics. The drive to appease upset stakeholders must not override an institution's commitment to free speech, she said. So what are the takeaways? Well, first, these viruses of group hate 
will only be defeated when we all take them as a personal insult, not to our tribal identity, but to our common humanity. Second, that some historic tragedies are not like anything else. The Holocaust is the Holocaust, just as slavery is slavery. Third, and finally, in order to build the broadest possible coalition to confront bigotry, we need to distinguish between poorly chosen words and those that are repeatedly designed to promote division and hate. And that's your reality check. A very needed one, John. Thank you. Thank you.